What's up everyone? How are you doing? My name is Julia and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to show you how to automatically embed your latest videos of your YouTube channel on your website so you don't have to do it manually every time. So we're gonna learn how to make an HTTP request to YouTube's API with the JavaScript fetch method to pull these videos automatically. Are you ready? Let's go! <laughs> okay, so what we want to do is have these three videos be updated automatically. So each time I publish a new one, the last one will disappear and the new one will appear here. And for that, we're gonna, let me show you the code. We're gonna create a folder. I already did create a YouTube demo folder. We're gonna create an index.html file. I'm already gonna create the style.css file for later and the main.js file for the JavaScript code. So for the index HTML, where you just have to press shift and exclamation point, and it gives you the basic structure of an HTML file. You can change the title. I'm gonna call it YouTube demo. And I also wanna add before starting to add inside the body, my elements, I wanna add the link to the style sheet and to the JavaScript file through the script tag. So for the style sheet, we're gonna do this and style.css. And for the JavaScript file, it's in the end of the body. We're gonna put script and then src equals main.js it should show up yes okay so for our videos we want three divs and inside each div we want an iframe where the video will be embedded so one div and iframe first i'm gonna delete this because the src we're gonna create it through javascript so we don't need that we are gonna create a class class called latest video embed we are also gonna create an attribute called venom and this one is gonna be zero the other ones are gonna be one and two I'm already gonna set the width and the height. So width 600 and height 340. And we also wanna allow full screen. So I'm gonna copy and paste. Okay, Vinam, I'm gonna change this to one and then two. It's the video number one, vid video zero, video number one, and video number two. The class is the same. So our index HTML is ready. I'm gonna save it. Don't forget to save it, command S or control S. And we're gonna jump to the JavaScript file. For the JavaScript file, we're going to start with the main function, which will englobe all the code. It's going to be an arrow function. So we're going to create a variable, call it load video. And the parameter is going to be iframe. And then the code is gonna be between the brackets. So I'm just gonna jump another line. Now we wanna build the URL where we can send the get request to. And the URL will contain three specific things. First, the channel ID. Second, the YouTube channel feed URL. 
and then we wanna convert the feed URL from RSS to JSON. But I'll explain all of that to you. So first we wanna specify our unique channel ID. I'm gonna create a constant called channel ID. So seed equals and to find your channel ID, your unique channel ID, you, you go to YouTube. Let me show you here. You sign into YouTube and then on the top right, you click your profile picture. You go to settings and then advanced settings. And this is your channel ID. You copy it. I just copied it. I'll also post the link to the, the advanced settings so you can just click and go there. I'll paste my channel ID there. Now we want to encode the YouTube channel feed URL with this channel ID as a query string parameter because we need to safely encode the URL so that it can be put into the get request. Otherwise, there are some characters that are not accepted. We're gonna do const channel URL equals, and then we're gonna use the encode URI component method. It's not the same as encode URI, I wrote an article explaining the difference between both methods. You should also check it out. And we're gonna use backticks. We're gonna paste the YouTube channel feed URL that is the same for everyone. There. And then we wanna use template literal to include the parameter, the seed, the channel ID parameter, the dollar sign and curly braces, and then we'll put seed. Now the third um, step that we need to do is use the RSS to JSON API because it will allow us to convert the RSS feed URL that we provided into properly formatted JSON data so that it can be fetched and then we can embed the results to our web page. So I'm gonna do const request URL equals backticks again. And again, I'm gonna copy and paste the API. I'll put it in the description and dollar sign curly braces, and we're gonna put channel URL here. Now we've constructed the URL that we're gonna call with the fetch request, and we wanna send the request now. In the fetch request, we're gonna pass this URL as a parameter. So we're gonna do fetch and then pass it rec URL because this is the path of the resource that we want to fetch. Now there will be a response after that, a response will be received, but uh, the response that we get is not JSON. It's an object with a series of methods that can be used depending on what we want to do with the information but to convert uh, the object returned into JSON, we need to use the JSON method. So we'll add the then method, which will contain an arrow function with a parameter called response. The response parameter takes the value of the object returned from the fetch URL and now we're gonna use the JSON method to convert the response into JSON data. So we're gonna do response.json using the JSON method. The JSON data still needs to be processed, so we're gonna add another then statement 
with a function that has an argument called result. Result. And we're going to open curly braces here. By this point, I usually like to console log just to make sure that the fetch request is working. I'm going to console log result. So still within the main function, we'll create a variable called video number. So const video number that is going to be equal to the vnum from the HTML file. So we're going to do const video number equals iframe dot get attribute. Oops. vnum. Now we're going to create a variable called link that is set to equal the URL from each of those items. So result dot items video number dot link. Finally, we want to create a variable called ID that it is set to equal the query parameter of each link. So link dot substring because we want to use the substring method to pull a new string from the link but starting from the character after the equal sign. So we're going to do link dot index of equal sign plus one. For example, we have this URL and the ID is going to be just this. We want to get the substring from this link, which is whatever is after the equal sign. I'm going to leave it there just so you can see it. Now each iframe needs the appropriate SRC to display the video. Remember that we removed this attribute in the HTML. Now we need to create it here in the JavaScript file. So we're going to do iframe.set attribute and SRC. The SRC attribute specifies the location of the video file. So the URL of the video file. We're gonna use a string interpolation to do it. So backticks here. This is, I'll, I'll also put this in the description. But youtube.com dash embed dash dollar sign curly braces ID and controls. Now with both then functions completed, we have both then functions. We want to add the catch function so it will log the potential errors to the console. I'm gonna jump here and then catch error console.log error error finally we'll use the dom selector uh, get elements by class name to um, grab the iframe elements from the html and iterate through the data that we fetched and add the iframes to the elements so we're gonna do const iframes equals document dot get element by class name here. Remember that we had created a class name uh, called the latest video embed. And now we're going to create a for loop that will loop through each of the iframes and 
attached the src attribute the appropriate one so the zero the one and the two in each of the iframes so for let i equals zero length equals iframe dot length i len i plus plus uh, load video which is our function iframe i so when i equals zero it's gonna load the video in the iframe zero. When i equals one, it's gonna load the video into the iframe one. And when i equals two, it's gonna load the video into the iframe two. And we can add more numbers. If you want more videos in your page, you don't need to just have three. You can have up until 10, I believe. Okay, so we save this. Now let's check if it's working. So it wasn't working because actually this needs to be outside of the function. You see we're troubleshooting. okay so it worked here is the result i have the three videos let's inspect so i can show you here we got three objects and we're getting the items so we're getting the link from the item if you if you see here so const link equals the result item of the video number. So each of these ones have a number. Uh, we attribute one, zero, one, two, and then we get the substring from it. Now let's finish by styling the videos. I wanna make them stay side by side in a row. So we're gonna add uh, another div here. Actually. And I'm gonna say, I'm gonna add class of videos. And now I'm, I'm, we're gonna use Flexbox. We're gonna say um, display flex justify content center. So as you can see here, it worked already. We just want to add a little bit of space in between. So I'm gonna do iframe, maybe some padding, uh, let's say 0 0.5 RAM here. So this is what I wanted to show you. Now, if I update any new video, it's gonna show up here and this one will disappear. I'm gonna leave the link to the repo. You can, you can use it as well. It's very easy and straightforward. I hope you were able to understand my explanation, but if you have any questions, just shoot me a message. Thank you so much for watching and if you can, I would really appreciate for you to give a like and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time. Bye!